man, I wish I was like a little more, especially now that I'm looking at these apartments. Like I'm like, oh man, if I'm, if I get moved into one of these places and like have a proper setup, like I can't wait to we play gotta some of these save games. it. I know. Right. I know. All right. Let's, All right. I'm, I'm good to go. We can... I'm pretty good to go too. Yeah. I just need to crack open the next uh, brew here. Nice. We'll see when Marie just jumps off my lap in the middle of recording and just rips the headphones out of the socket. <laughs> oh, speaking of, we should do a uh, collapse Ooh, Ooh, yeah. I don't think Reese has ever been on my lap when I do a clap, so we'll see how she reacts clap. to that. L- Ooh, little lap clap. everybody welcome to pursuing pixels my name is kevin portelli and i'm here tonight with john hines hey there and it's just the two of us i guess uh once again in this regard last uh proper episode was just randall and i now we got john and i might be john and i for next week because we're planning on chatting a bunch of games here tonight we'll see if we got a double whammy yeah yeah we'll see how far these beers take us Mm -hmm. and whatnot um, I've been anxious all day. I know my, I got the family downstairs watching uh golden bachelor and like, I'm like, Oh man, it's going to bleed into the recordings. <laughs> so hopefully we'll be good here tonight. Um, but yeah, I've been playing some video games. I don't know about you, John. I've been bouncing around. Haven't been playing a ton. I've still been playing quite a bit of uh super Mario brothers wonder. Mm-hmm. Although I will say I haven't been as compelled. Like I've been picking it up here and there, like in my morning, like I usually have like an hour after I like take a shower and get ready in the mornings before work. And then I'm just kind of like waiting to leave because I just I don't know. I don't like to be in a scramble in the morning. Yeah. And so I'll just like now that I've beaten the game, I'll just be like, oh, let me grab my switch and play some handheld and, you know, try to comb through and get some of like the purple coins that I missed or get some of the, you know, look for a secret exit. There's definitely some things that I haven't 100 percent. You know, I definitely haven't 100 percent of the game just yet. Um, but I will say, like, as much as I've been having fun bouncing back through and combing through the levels, like, I, d- I don't see myself, like, actually going through and 100 percenting every last thing. I don't know if it's partially because the way the, like, it, there's still, like, a really nice way to, like, dive into the menu and then jump between each world and hit the shoulder buttons and kind of, mm-hmm. you know, skim through the level selection and pick the one you want to go to and see what's checked off. But I really wish you could just see, like, truly, like, a list of the levels and, like, you know, just, okay, let me see all the levels in this world. Do I have the purple coin? Did I get the top of the, you know, it's the flag so pole? And even that, that it's like, there. I know it, it feels like a little bit of an oversight almost as, as cool and as slick and as like stylish as the menus are. They're like really vibrant and almost like alive. Um, the way you can like jump in these menus and like, I don't know, it just feels very like snappy and snazzy, but at the same time, yeah. And, and like, even just the stuff like I don't necessarily want to have to get the top of every flagpole. I think I mentioned this when we talked about it before or when, it <laughs> well, might have been when Randall and I have to. Well, yeah, but like uh, but like, for example, in Super Mario 3D World, and I think I talked about this last time, like you, when you get the cat suit, you can like just climb the top of the flagpole. So you can just kind of like spam and stockpile the little bells. And yeah, just basically, OK, I didn't get it on this stage. Let me just make sure I have a cat suit when I get to the exit and climb up the top of the pole. And then when you did get a hundred percent in that game, like finding all the secrets and getting the top of the pole on each stage, it did unlock like a couple bonus levels and stages. And like, I'm normally really kind of into that stuff in Mario games. And as much as I'm having a good time with wonder, I don't see myself unless I get a good proper chance to play some multiplayer with some friends and stuff. I don't know if I see myself like going back and, combing through and getting 100 percent with this game which is not a complaint at all yeah. i'm like i've still had a blast with the game but i'm just like that that is something different for me with a mario game yeah yeah i don't know i know you said last time because i was editing some like save it for the cast stuff the other day or maybe it was an intro or outro but i know like right after we finished recording like the first time we talked about it you were like oh you guys convinced me i'm picking this game up so i know you haven't snagged it just yet um but it's one i know we were gaming with our uh bandmates the other night online and this game does have full online multiplayer so i am kind of itching to like get a session in with randall online or the three of us or with the band guys or i don't know i'm definitely itching to play some multiplayer on this game because i do feel like it really would shine a little more brightly in that regard and that's interesting especially for you know how randall and you have your own save files how it would record progress for a multiplayer if like you hundred percent the level while you're doing it multiplayer yeah. if it clears it for both of you or whatnot yeah like getting the coins and stuff like that and who gets the top of the flagpole that number one that mm. if it does share it that would be a really cool way to like help some people out who haven't 
yeah. you know, who are maybe struggling to get 100 percent but want to see all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I still like it. I uh, and I will say, I guess I one more thing, I guess, to add to that, because I have had a chance to play through some of the levels because I have been combing through looking for the secrets. I have played some of the stages, like I mentioned before, I was kind of curious how they would play if you don't get the wonder flower and kind of trigger yeah. the zany event and on a few occasions i have kind of just zipped through the stages and they do feel like totally normal like other than it does feel kind of obvious that you clearly like skip past something that seems like oh i I should look for something or trigger an event here sometimes it's right out in the open but it does feel a little bit like i I don't know it just feels like a regular mario level i was kind of impressed to see that they still played like a I don't know. It still felt like a good time. It didn't feel like an empty gap. Like I was kind of thinking about like Super Paper Mario. Like there was that cool premise of flipping into that 3D mode, but like it only really felt cool when there was something there half the time, more than half the time. Yeah. And the majority of time it was like this is just empty space. Yeah. Yeah. With like, yeah, now that bush is just flat and I can't see the cool art style of the game anymore. So except sometimes um, there would be a hidden thing there that you'd need for a side quest for a character that gives you an incredibly pointless thing. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly, exactly. Um, And I did actually trick myself for a second because I must I did boot it up and finally play as someone other than Mario because I was like, I wonder if the other characters play any different. And I was like, they have Daisy in the game. I've obviously never played as Daisy in a Mario game. So let's see how she feels. And uh, I didn't realize that I must have saved, like my last time I saved, I must have had the bubble power up. And so I was like, oh, Daisy just has bubbles all the time, like mm-hmm. starts with them automatically. And then I took took a couple hits and I was like, oh, that never mind. That's just <laughs> the state that I was in when I was last playing the game. But it is cool that like I didn't play as Luigi because I did want I kind of curious to see if like Luigi still has like the little flutter yeah. Yoshi style jump or the slippery controls. But Daisy, to the best that I could tell, felt exactly the same as Mario, like no gotcha. difference whatsoever. Um, but yeah, why don't we just move on to the next thing, uh, that we were playing, at least for me, I was playing this right beforehand, which is not my, uh, usual style, um, for the podcast. Although as of late, ever since I started this job, I feel like maybe a little bit more so, but I know you've put a little bit of time into this game as well. Mm -hmm. This was my resolution game for this year. So as per usual, I'm cutting this like right (laughs) under the wire. Um, but yeah, I decided to play uh, Anodyne uh, 2, Return to Dust, and Anodyne, the original game, is one of my favorite games. I, I shouldn't say one of my favorite games ever because I say that about so many games, but it's a game that's really kind of just stuck with me and resonated with me over the years. I think I talked about it in like kind of the earlier days of the podcast. Uh, I might have even played it like a little bit before the podcast. I'm not even 100% sure if I ever talked about it too much. I know it's one that I never made a video for, for like the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's one of my favorite games. It it bums me out that I don't have one. And it kind of bummed me out that I wasn't able to stream this one. Uh, But at the same time, that's part of the reason I've been kind of putting it off. uh, Because partially, you know, I've mentioned a bunch of times I don't have the best setup for gaming. So I got this like kind of impromptu situation going on and streaming at least like strapping on the headphones lets you get a little more uh, sucked into the experience and whatnot but I will say and I fired this up for about an hour and a half uh, before we uh, jumped on to record tonight because I was like I got to get this in under the wire and uh, I had fired it up a couple times before and it actually was the reason I didn't continue to play because it really has a powerful opening I feel like the game just kind of starts out and it's like almost like has like a message for the player, like from the developers. It's like kind of in the world of the game, but it's definitely breaking the fourth wall where it's like, you know, Hey, if you haven't played Anodyne one, don't worry about it. The fourth wall is kind of also part of, I think Anodyne and Anodyne two. Like it, it definitely is thematically consistent. Yeah. It just feels like a little more polished and upfront in this version to me. I guess it like, it was a little more like in your face right at the, initial start of the game but yeah the the sense of humor is definitely very similar although again the writing and and humor feels a little more polished up in this go around like I was definitely getting some good chuckles like right off the bat like you're like kind of like this game is like gets into some pretty like deeper heavy themes whatever you want to call it at least in the early going like you're definitely it's like kind of like you know some similarities with like you know just like the creation of the universe and just the you know just coming into existence and consciousness and stuff like that And uh, yeah, Anodyne, the original game is like strictly a top down kind of, you know, for lack of a comparison, like a Zelda style game, although it doesn't necessarily play entirely Zelda style. It's a little more like combat driven. Uh, You can jump and kind of your main thing is like you can in that game, you have like a broom and you're like moving these dust particles and moving them around and solving puzzles in these top down again, for lack of a comparison, Zelda style dungeons 
and yeah, like single screen where once you reach the edge, it loads a new like full screen that you go into. Yeah, and like especially Anodyne One and this game too a little bit, but Anodyne One is like really kind of retro jank. Like it feels like a kind of really old, like lost PC game that you just like found online somewhere. And mm-hmm. you're just like, how do who made this? You know, I, I don't know. It just like feels really like mysterious. Everything about it and and Anodyne Two is just really leaning into that, but with like higher production values, but at the same time, really kind of like a low res production situation it's very much leaning into that like ps1 era 32-bit 3d in this game the difference in this game is it has like full like three a full 3d world to explore that to me has like uh i haven't played a ton of the final fantasy series but i did play actually quite a bit of final fantasy 8 and something about like these opening worlds and settings are just reminding me a little bit of like final fantasy 8 or even like 13 i remember watching uh like magic technology sort of yeah yeah like futuristic, but like crystals and stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, but it's it's very different, but the same. But like mm-hmm. the way again, like you're in total 2D mode in Anodyne One, but in Anodyne Two, you're like in this 3D, like full blown, you know, third person kind of 3D platformer. Nothing like you're not like doing Mario style platforming or anything like that. But you do have to jump around and land on some narrow ledges and stuff like that. But then you basically just have to find these like corrupted or sick like residents that have been like infected by the dust virus or whatever and then you like blast them with your little like projectile after you talk to them a few times and like kind of trigger that like oh hey they they seem like they need some help Mm -hmm. and then you kind of like shrink down to miniature nano size and like basically like go inside their like body or whatever and or whatever the setting is inside of them and like essentially cure them which is is really cool it's like a really to me, it's been so long since I played Anodyne that, like, I mostly just remember the general, like, mood and mysteriousness and, mm-hmm. like, f- general feeling of it. But I don't necessarily remember, like, the themes and, like, content as much. Um, but this game is, like, kind of really leaning into, like, there's a lot more dialogue, I feel. There was a decent mm-hmm. amount in Anodyne as well. But, like, when you talk to anyone, like, there's quite a bit. Uh, but I really love it in like, the 3D mode. You can like just transform into like a car vehicle. The, the thing controls at any in moment 3D like, are so nice. It's really yeah. good. Like I appreciate in a sort of open ended platformer, not so much like a precision 3D platformer, but having those yeah. really floaty jumps that allow you to do a lot. And then yeah, the ability yeah. to just transform into a car. I forget what the mode is called, but it's a great yeah. It's like transport mode or something. And it doesn't really explain it. It just says, oh, if you need to move fast, like press the R button. And then when you do, you just turn into this car version of yourself and that rules. Yeah. And it's so smooth and the controls take just a little getting used to but once you get the hang of it it's like oh this feels nice and you can just yeah rip in and out of that at any moment like literally any moment at one point i did like because you get you can do like this double jump and then you can also hold down jump to kind of like hover yeah mario world slow your style like yeah float down and like i was doing that like off this high ledge like tower or whatever that i climbed up and then i was just like i wonder if i can transform into a car in midair and sure enough yep just transform and just land on the ground and zip in and you can really get some speed going um but yeah, I've really been impressed. Like to me, the visuals, like obviously this whole 32 bit or whatever you want to call it, this new like 3D world is totally new to Anodyne. But then the 2D sections where you do shrink down to miniature, that's where it does kind of shift to like the same style of gameplay uh, to an- the original Anodyne. But instead of having like a broom kind of like acting like a sword, you actually have like a vacuum that you're able to like suck up boxes or enemies or projectiles or whatever. And then launch them at other things and already the puzzles like i've only like uncorrupted like obviously i did like the opening bits and like got through the opening sequence of the game and then i think i've like explored around a little bit and like you know rescued or whatever two more residents or or people and all the creatures and characters you talk to are like so like freakish and like design i don't know where they come up every single character in like a way that is you know, usually somewhat anthropomorphic, but sometimes just completely not. Yeah, they're just like these globules of uh, textures sometimes, but yeah. like they're all they all have like a great sense of humor. Like I've I've really been cracking up quite a few times. Like when you first get introduced to like the two like main characters when you're like first opening up the game, your two moms. <laughs> it's like 
Yeah, it's like mommies, and then yeah. it like erases the text, and then it's like, you know, the center of the universe or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's it's done that like twice now, where I've, I, the second time it truly got a legit laugh out of me. Um, but I really love the visual aesthetic of the uh, 2D mode. It has like a little bit of almost like a Game Boy Advance kind of yeah. flavor to it, especially because it does like almost have this like visual like uh, it almost looks like you're playing on some kind of like handheld device. Like there's right. kind of some borders around the screen. Um, the one thing I'll say is like it does have moments and just like the first one, like there's moments where it's a little bit hard to decipher. I'm like, oh, I can just walk on that. Yeah, but that's like what's so that's what's kind of cool about the game is like you're you're you really have to like poke and prod at like what like at one point I was like, why is why can't I get through this gate? Why does the gate keep closing? And it's like, oh, I have to just like not kill the enemies in this room like that gate actually was not closed at first. And then you realize, oh, that like that like little slime enemy has like a bow on its head. It kind of looks like a little bit like a baby. And you're like, oh, I must not want to like you can't kill these little baby slimes because mm-hmm. that's just like a negative thing or whatever. I don't know. Um, yeah. Each but even just already, has its own unique puzzle that may, is somewhat yeah. connected to the other ones. But you really have to they're each in an individual puzzle to solve independent entirely. Like you can't even like grab a box or a slime and like carry it into the next screen. Like if you walk to the next one, then your little vacuum is empty immediately. But already like the chain like again, I've only like rescued two people in the chain reactions where you got to like have these like flame things off that are like moving along the wall and following you like shoot and hit a slime that will then hit the slime will then walk into like some kind of cobweb thing and light it on fire yep. so that you can walk through it. like the puzzles already are getting pretty clever and I'm like man this game is just kicking off again I've only played an hour hour and a half and I'm very very impressed um, I am having like those thoughts where I'm like, oh, man, I don't have the best setup for gaming. Maybe I should like save this for when I have a better time. Or like I was saying, like, I wish I could have streamed this opening bits and kind of like really got sucked in with the headphones on and stuff like that. But I am really impressed and really like looking forward. It's it's everything I was hoping it would be. But like, I don't know. I know you've played quite, probably more than me, I think. Right. Honestly, I've played pretty much the exact same amount. And it's OK a similar reason of like but i guess of of wanting to you know have a better setup or a better context to play the game but not so much a physical limitation as emotional limitation yes where yes i was playing the game and i could already sense i was like i'm not getting it's it's not the fault of the game that i'm not getting into it but i am not in the right frame of mind for this and i was yeah i was kind of feeling a little disappointed where i was like god i just need to now that i know what this game is like i know that i'm going to need to be in a specific mood in order to play it And uh, that's one of the things that I like about us doing these resolution games is that it kind of forces us to play games that, you know, we're for whatever reason resisting or whatnot. But there are like certain games where it's like I'm I'm not in the right headspace to play this right now and I'm not going to give this game its fair shake because it's obviously a very well crafted game and it's got a lot to say, but it's going to bounce off me if I force it right now. So that's kind of where I'm at, where I was like, oh, I I do like this, but I know I'm not liking it as much as I could potentially. That's totally fair, because I definitely there was part of me, too, where I was like, I don't want to play more than this because I was already feeling like, OK, there's a lot of reading going on. Not not a ton, but like you're definitely doing quite a bit of more more than I tend to do mm-hmm. or tend to prefer when I'm playing a game. I kind of like to just get right into it and skip right these through these dialogue boxes. Let's get to the gameplay. And like there's been a nice little you know, they're interspersing the gameplay pretty nicely at this point, but I do feel like, man, okay, let's get the ball rolling. I want to find these first four cards so I can like upgrade this tank yes. and let's get going. As, I yeah, think I as found soon as I got a card, so I was like, ah, oh, that's how mo- that's how long it takes to get a card. Uh, I need to, I'm not going to speed run this game and just yeah. skip over all the emotional depth. <laughs> And that's my instinct when I'm playing games, let alone when I'm trying to like, oh, man, I know John already played. Like I, all I did is I looked at my switch last night and it was like John played Anodyne 2 seven days ago. And I was like, shit, I've only booted this up. Like, <laughs> And again, the reason I waited, just like you said, like when I booted up, like the music is so like beautiful right on the menu screen. And like have I even booted up a couple times, like or at least once, maybe even twice that opening sequence where you're like just getting introduced into the world, like before you even get to play any gameplay. Mm-hmm. And I was just like. Yeah, this isn't the right time. Like I'm yep. I'm into this, but like I'm not absorbed enough in the moment and I don't think right now is the time to play this. 
Uh, but again, obviously, like you said, when the t- clock's ticking and you're like, hey, you know what? I need to fire this game up. But now that I like am familiar enough with it, whether I keep going with it right this second or wait till I get situated in a new living situation or whatever, like now I at least have the familiarity where if I do start over or pick it up where I left off, I can kind of just breeze through that opening bit Mm -hmm. and know what's going on. So I'm at least happy I'm at that point. And I am happy that like, it does seem like I'm going to get what I'm looking for, but I am a little nervous because I did play their follow-up game to this Stephanie, I think. And I I think I talked about it briefly. on like a save it for the cast or even a regular episode. And I was like, it did have some 3d platformering. I was going to say platformering, uh, but platforming. And Mm -hmm. it's like felt a little like this. And I didn't, necessarily love that one and it was a little heavy on the story and the dialogue so i was getting a little flight uh, pushing a little tug of war like i'm like i'm getting all the anodyne stuff i love but i am getting a little bit of that Stephanie stuff that i didn't love as much um but it might be the right i mix. don't know it could be the, yeah just and they the are right working levels. on an yeah and they are this team is working on a new game at the moment i'm drawing a blank on the name of it but uh it looks really cool it looks kind of like a good mix of all the stuff they've done so far so nice. i'm just a huge fan it's mostly like a two-person studio mm-hmm. um i think it's analgesic games but yep. it's basically like a two-person studio but yeah they're doing awesome stuff and yeah i'm looking forward to whatever they do next so nice um but yeah why don't we kick it over to the other game that uh you've been playing here john Man, so in the most emotional whiplash of something (laughs) that is, you know, very carefully crafted in terms of making you feel, think a lot and feel a lot and like sit with your emotions, I finally booted up the sequel to in the No More Heroes franchise of No More Heroes 3 that is just an absolute shit show of (laughs) everything so wild i'm a huge suda 51 fan uh grasshopper studios suda goichi and he is my auteur of choice over the hideo kojima or any other person in the games industry just because all of suda's games are so purposefully stupid in a way that knows that they're supposed to be ridiculous and over the top and absurd in that way and very self indulgent. And the, uh, yeah, yeah, I literally, I think, booted this game up immediately after I put the <laughs> hand <dying> two <laughs> down. I was like, yeah, this is the exact speed my brain's working at right now. <laughs> Like, that feels like the perfect kind of mode for like an after work game. Just no, I've only played like a tiny bit of the original No More Heroes on. Uh, I was gonna say on Switch, but on Wii. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had I don't I don't, the series always like piques my interest mostly because yeah, it's a suit of fifty one game. But I've really never played a ton of their games. Yeah. Um, but they always pique my interest, and I own a handful of them. But yeah. there was wasn't there another release between two and three? There was like a No More Heroes spin off thing that you talked about travis strikes back which that's was right yeah i met a commentary on indie game development because yeah grasshopper studios is has always been an independent game studio and yeah. because of that it has limitations on that this is i be, oh god i think part of uh travis strikes back which i'm not even sure if that's actually the title because it kind of was a little bit of forgettable game um yeah yeah and it like travis was wearing an unreal engine uh, t-shirt oh my god yeah yeah and half of the fourth wall breaking kind of thing oh there is there's no fourth wall it is there travis directly talks to you as the player like as a fully oh god i i love this series because of i don't know it, it really does feel unique in a way i think that there's a lot of games that are self-referential or self-aware of them being games and talk to you as the player as as a player yeah, yeah. controlling a character in a game yeah or even just little stuff like press the a button to make you know just when they like reference controls and stuff like that yeah but i think that there is a very specific tone in suda 51 games that uh I could absolutely see being incredibly grating to a lot of people and the, these yeah. games are not particularly successful. So yes, I, even when I 
like started playing it, Lauren asked, is like, when did you buy this game? Is like, oh, I bought it immediately when it came out because I had no faith that it would have be still be in stock ever again after the initial printing sold out. And right. Like the very, f- I don't even like even describing this game kind of seems pointless <laughs> because <laughs> so much of every at least with one and two, there was a little bit of consistency between game modes, but it yeah. has been so long and especially after Travis Strikes Back where that was a lot of meta commentary on indie game development and so it was constantly switching between it was like a game mishmash modes. of genres and stuff yeah 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 and and, then, and one and two or at least one I don't know if two but they were both on the Wii right and they were really kind of designed around those like Wii motion controls not that you can't do that with the joy cons but I don't know if that's what they're trying to do here with uh they have it all, but they have that integrated into this. I haven't. I my Joy-Con drift is so bad that I just yeah, haven't even, even worth. attempted, which is yeah. a bummer because yeah, like part in the gross humor of the first, like it was explicitly like made so that you would recharge your knock off lightsaber that you ordered online by basically imitating masturbating like just shaking the wii <laughs> mote and like i don't think tra- i ever played enough of it to realize yeah yeah and that that's still going through like there's some level of crudeness in the game and like not to be taken seriously and it's so uh, there's a lot of meta commentary on other uh film work and there is an entire section of a cutscene that has absolutely nothing to do with the story where it's just the just Travis touchdown talking to I have no idea who else and it's just an extended conversation about Takashi Miike films and it's like <laughs> this has nothing to do with the game this is literally just an opinion that Suda has that he wants to put in the game and yeah. in a way that uh you know Hideo Kojima would try to do that I was that just going to say through, very Kojima yeah but like he would do that through a, a conversation that you would have on a codec call it's like oh this is the character who gives you advice and it obliquely references a film thing and Suda's like I I know authors who use subtext and they're all cowards I'm just going to tell you exactly <laughs> to your face how I feel and like it's kind of refreshing yeah and like it definitely caught lauren's uh, like attention she's like what the hell is this game what's happening at any given moment it's just so wild and off the wall in a way that i kind of wish maybe i don't i was gonna say i kind of wish more games did but i'm like no i kind of like that this is relegated yeah, if that to was the norm weirdo. it wouldn't be as special yeah yeah but but the thing that i think does kind of set it apart and i, I know it's not like a full-blown like triple a game obviously but it does have at least the original ones had like kind of that level of like production value where it was yeah. like a higher end like you know you don't see a lot of that when you see these kind of weird whatever crazy games that are a little bit off kilter off beat they usually are kind of like these weird you know lower production value games nothing that's not i don't mean that as like a negative thing or anything but you know they're just like not these full-blown like 3d you know borderline double a triple a games you know and it's a i think a very similar thing to the like one and two in that the combat is really fleshed out, really feels nice, and every other section looks like it's the most bare bones piece of shit, like PS1 bargain bin game. And like it's yeah. almost by design that, you know, at, at this point, yes, that's per- that's a purposeful game design decision to be like, yeah, this isn't the important part of the game, so this is going to control poorly. This is going to look really bad as opposed to, all of the flashy parts, which is where all of the budget goes. It is showing you in with no pretense or trying to hide it is like, now nah, we put all the money into the giant mech battle that happens once with you walking around <laughs> your apartment to select things controls like a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. There are those concessions with those kind of games, but you, if you're just like, Hey, you know what? This is so one of a kind. I just gotta, just gotta live with the way it is, you know? Yeah. So it's what are, it's my popcorn game. It's it's turn my brain off. Just enjoy something that's unique and interesting, but ultimately pretty like shallow. Yeah, 
What are what are some of the other Suda Fifty One games like prior? I know like Killer Seven was that like one of yep. the first releases from them. Oh, I think Lollipop Chainsaw was another one. Oh, that's oh man, I didn't know that was them. And then he did one with um, that was a free to play, and it was also kind of a comment. It was like Death on a Skateboard, uh, like or. I don't remember what it was called, but <laughs> it was explicitly built around free to play and Dark Souls. It was a free to play Dark Souls in a way that would show just how awful <laughs> that that concept was. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Killer Seven is the one that is actually, I would say, either art or interesting just because it is very limited in scope and control scheme, uh, very, like, restrained is the word I'm using, I I think I'm looking for, in terms of aesthetic, where it's all, like, a very consistent shell-shaded, shell, cell-shaded look. (laughs) Um, Whereas, you know, you kind of get the similar vibe with the No More Heroes series, but it, it just tries to do so much more and it switches between aesthetics and yeah, even a thing in No More Heroes 3 is that it opens up with a fictional game and Travis like half remembering and like stumbling through them and it's you realize that he's watching it on like a, an in-universe YouTube, so you're seeing playthroughs oh, of it, God. and it has the exactly it pop up how every channel that does Let's Plays does, and like it shows recommended videos of other video games, and it's just like this dreamlike description of a game that you half remember from your childhood. That is ah, oh, just perfect. Love it. Yeah, I think the other game, I was just looking it up on my phone for a second, the other game I was thinking of from uh, Suda was uh, Shadows of the Damned, I think it's called. It's like a third-person shooter, almost like a Resident Evil, at least that over-the-shoulder, kind of like Gears of War style, whatever, like real close Mm -hmm. camera. But I remember that game getting like some mixed reviews, but I feel like every time there's a Suda game, there's always like a little bit of... The, hype slash curiosity more than anything. I don't know if it's hype every, every time, Suda but. 51 game is a 7.5 C minus game. It is always going to be just the but, slightly above average game. <laughs> but like, at like 120% of yes. like whatever it's trying to do, like going Leaning all in on that. Like, so into it. Yeah. Like, really going into, like, the anime, like, over-the-topness in a lot of regards. And that cel-shaded styling, I think, lends B-movie, itself to that, too. B-movie, splatter. Yeah. Like, every... It, it it wears all of its influences so much on its sleeve. And, and so much so that, at this point, it's not even trying to hide them. There is a, a literal, like, facehugger alien scene where they just say, you know, from that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And that it's like you like you said, you just gotta be in the right frame of mind for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like sometimes that stuff can hit fall flat, but if you're in the right oh. mood and the right setting, it's like okay, perfect. Like wrapping up with like a long after a long day of work and I'm just gonna play like the next like chapter or setting. How's the game broken up? Is it like open world ish or is it like levels and you're just playing through or they've already set up some in universe thing so that it's set up exactly the same as one and two, even though it's a galactic alien invasion as opposed to an assassin's and it doesn't bother to explain doesn't bother to give you any reason for background it just shows the alien like behead the president and shove it in front of this <laughs> like, like <laughs> i i i am assuming it's exactly the same as one and two i've only gotten past the first area because it does hop between so many different modes of play and so many different things that there was kind of this the tutorial area is a little bit longer because it's padding it out with mo- just more stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I I'm excited. See why, yeah. At first I was kind of curious why you wanted to pair that together with Anodyne too, but I definitely sort of see what you're saying in a lot of regards. Like they're very different games and different tones, yes. different, like couldn't be more polar opposites. In Anodyne a lot of regards, is a game are. that was made with something to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, No More Heroes probably has something to it say does. as well, but just something totally different. <laughs> something so totally unimportant in comparison. 
Right, right. I truly, yeah, in the first, like, hour or so of Anodyne 2, like, I'm already thinking, like, this this could, like, maybe, like, you know, affect yeah, me in, cool. a, in a meaningful yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> this and, is something and again, that I, I want to dedicate time to and, like, dedicate, like, thinking actively about, whereas I'm yeah. just going to passively play No More Heroes and enjoy the roller coaster ride that it is. Yeah. And that's a, again, like a a testament to anodyne. Like I was kind of like skimming through the diet, not skimming. I was fully reading it, but my instinct kind of like holding down a and trying to make the dialogue go faster. And I'm like, I'm not appreciating this properly. You know, I need to like slow down and pump the brakes and and sit down and enjoy this game. Cause that, that music even just like, I kept like getting up to like adjust the volume on my TV. Cause I was like, it's not loud enough. I was like, I don't want to be too loud and disrupt everyone else in the house. But I was like, I really need to like hear this music. I'm really getting sucked into this. I will say, so, I don't remember if it's uh, what the exact quote is on the original grasshopper logo. If it's punks, not dead, but Suda Goichi is also a huge music fan. So the no okay. more heroes see like, the th- one part of the no more heroes series that has the most care put into it is the music. And the soundtracks are just unbelievable. And as soon as I heard a new song with the light motif from the series, I was like, oh, he's back at it again. We got a new genre of music that we're going to go into for this. It rules. I'm so excited. Okay, and is Suda the composer as well, or I, the internet in 2003 was a little bit more nebulous, and I, I don't <laughs> know if I can trust my memory or the original yeah, yeah. sources from what fan translated interviews right. there were. I think he had a more active role in composing music in the first one, and then at I'm pretty sure it was more just musicians like and musical bands director that he likes. kind of thing and, yeah 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 who and came in right. and would write a version of like the main theme or something and, and there's something to be said about that i mean even yeah. even when you're watching a movie and it's just like a you know some song just regular song you know not a score or anything but just like a pop song and it's just like hey if it's the right song for the right mood mm-hmm. or even like the during the credits you know there's some songs they're just like man that just hits so hard like when the credits come on and this that's song why they give playing, oscars like, for the end credits songs do they really that's how most of the like original songs written for oh you're right that's how what's his face uh neil finn got one for uh i think did he good for him for lord of the rings which is good for him whatever that's a that's a completely off topic thought for another day (laughs) thought for another day (laughs) Uh, but i'm I'm good to call it there bud yeah i was gonna say speaking of another day why don't we uh wrap it up here for the video games chit chat and whatnot i'll say i'm definitely looking forward to playing some more anodyne 2 i don't know if i'll be playing more of it in 2023 for sure but definitely it's one of the games like as soon as i'm situated and have like a proper streaming setup and can get into a little bit more of my routine i'm like i'm almost there same i'm definitely this is like one of those games that's like right there for me but at the same time i'm also like once i'm situated mario wonder like have some friends over and like hey got enough controllers let's pass around the joy cons and play some multiplayer so i'm definitely a couple games that i've been playing a little quite a bit of but looking forward to playing more of so nice but uh yeah we'll wrap it up there for this week and uh as always you can find us on the internet at pursuingpixels.com or virtually uh anywhere else just look up pursuing pixels and uh yeah until next week we'll uh catch you then and take care and yeah see ya (laughs) bye (laughs) <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I don't know. It's gone. Uh, no, nah, it's gone, baby. As soon as you said that, I was like, "Yep." I, I had the, the problem of one time I was on the phone with like a revenue agent, and as you know, just at, at the end, I was saying, "It's like, yep, appreciate your help." Blah blah blah. Like this was glad we were able to sort this out and then i had to physically restrain myself in the moment from saying all right love you bye (laughs) (laughs) i definitely have had those moments where i've either said it or caught myself right before i did and was like whoops Mm -hmm. (laughs) oh man